I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Louis, you really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Do you know what we're looking for? We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Oh, that? That's what we come to find? The Lance that a Centurion stuck in the side of Christ at his crucifixion? That's it. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. I at least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Why did you shoot Emily's sister? Do you really think now is the right time for this? I want to know, Mother. Why did you betray her? Listen, Louis. I don't think you've really understood my interest in the Al-Azif. It's not just simple curiosity about some old relic. You tried to kill her. And I had no choice for crying out loud. It must not fall into the hands of the demons, or we are all doomed, don't you see? Listen, I don't know exactly what it contains, but I prefer to be one step ahead. If they want it, there must be a reason. And even if I don't know what it is, I want to stop them for safety's sake, no matter what. Nothing will stop you if I understand correctly. Not Enough, even Louis. If you could see the extent of their power as I do, then you would understand what I'm saying. All right, we'll do it your way. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lance, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaget. He's the one who probably knows the most about this. sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. 
It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Great! Now let's see what's inside. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I. I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could- not listening to me. You are playing with fire. Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lance, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So you are looking for the holy lance of Longinus, are you? Exactly. Frank and direct. I like that. Thank you for not trying to be sly. You are looking for the lance. You should know. You are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? If I told you why I needed this lance, you would never believe it. Trust me, you can tell me anything. It's our only chance to vanquish the demons. Oh, my dear God, Louis. You sound just like Sarah. Do you realize you are following the same path, step by step? Sarah also started by imagining things. She, too, spoke of demons, I am told. She could no longer speak to anyone, and saw a hidden monster in every guest, lurking in the shadows, ready to devour her. You must let us help you. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spear-headed lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. I'm back on the trail of my mother again. I don't have time to explain, but would you know anything about the Holy Lance? I... Ah, uh, that's good news. But be careful, Louis. You might end up getting noticed. Do you know anything or not? No, I regret I don't. But why not ask von Wallner? Theology is his field, after all. That's an idea. In that case, I'll try and find him. 
You are keeping up the good work, I see. But I'm telling you, keep your guard up. Everyone is rather on edge right now. You're right. Thanks for everything, Mr. President. See you later. Look, a, a blotter. And apparently it's been used recently. I wonder what Volner was going to write. It's smudged. It's not all legible. I can make out the signature, though, and leave as Azif planned le landing stage landing stage so Volner is going to leave Al Azif at the landing stage isn't he what a mess looks like Volner was interrupted A lot like straw, and he's drawn something in a hurry on this sheet. Straw on his desk, as if to, as if to protect something fragile. Yes, someone must have packed something away here. What a mess! Looks like Volner was interrupted. Chemistry set. That's not surprising coming from Von Wolner. So, let's see what Volner has in his bookcase. Uh, a few works on religions, two scientific essays about human thought. Most of these works are on alchemy. Longini Militis Fabulum. Ah, what have we here? It looks like a kind of biography on Longinus the Centurion. Truly, Volner has done everything he can to get information about that lance. Mm, I'd better keep this one, though. Dirty shay. Damn, that's all I need. Maybe he knows something about the lance. What are you doing in my room? Sir, perfect timing. I, I was looking for you. You were looking for me? Well, here I am. What can I do for you? I was wondering if you might help me. You're the one looking for the lance. No, Don't I... take me for a fool. You are looking for the holy lances. What's the matter? You seem completely panicked at the idea I might be interested in this relic. I... No, no. That's not true. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid. You know Mortimer's got it. So you're not worried that I'd give it back to him? What is so you? So why are you so terrified of me being able to find it? You have no idea what it is you're looking for. What are you playing at, Richet? Mortimer's the one who has that cursed lance. How long have you been looking for it? Ah, I see. You want it, and so you plan to steal it from Mortimer. For a long time. Isn't that right? Why, you little swine! You're planning to give it to Sir Gregory. You're looking to double-cross me and Piaggi too. What on earth is he talking about? But calm yourself, goddammit. You're the one I'm trying to help. What? What? I heard you talking with his eminence, and it seemed to me that this story about the lances had put you in a tight spot. I was only trying to be helpful. But why didn't you tell me straight away? Seeing as I hadn't found it, I, I didn't want to commit myself too quickly. If I failed, I, I would look like a beginner. Uh, I understand, Louis. I thought you were trying to manipulate me. But please, uh, excuse me. I got a little bit uh, carried away. But you can't get ahead by staying in the shadows on a case like this. There are already several of us searching for the Lance of Longinus. And it would be smarter to pool our information. Unfortunately, I've barely made any progress. I'm still trying to find out what the original Lance really looked like. Ah, let me reassure you, we've all been there, given the number of copies there are in existence. It also took us quite some time to discover its true shape. Many believe the central part of the head of the Lance to be covered in gold. 
Whereas, in truth, its center is made of an alloy of copper and iron. That does make sense. In those times, a centurion wouldn't have any chance of possessing a lance made of gold. Ah, that is the perversion of Christian idolatry. A copper lance could not have been noble enough to pierce the side of Christ. Anyway, thank you, sir. You're welcome, Louis. But keep me posted as to your research. We're bound to end up recovering it. I'm counting on it. See you later. I managed to get the biography of Longinus the Centurion. Let's see what it can teach me. Hmm. An interesting passage here tells me that the lance is engraved with the symbol of the first Christians. The fish. St. Longinus, let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? No, this is too easy. Mortimer's trying to throw me off the track again. It seems too visible to be true. Impossible not to see the statue on first glance, given its size. And Mortimer has no interest in making the shape of the true lance so easy to see. Hey, looks like there's a symbol engraved on the tip. Yes, a fish. The Christian fish, no doubt. It can't be a coincidence. It, it must have been done on purpose. Huh, good thing I took a closer look. Adoration of the Shepherds with Saints Longinus and John. Giulio Romano, 1534. Longinus is holding the holy lance in his left hand, and I'll bet he's holding the sponge soaked in holy blood in the other hand. Yes! Here we can see that the holy lance is represented in the shape of a spear. I better make sure I check this twice. It's, it's a work that dates from the Renaissance. And there's nothing to say that it's not based on erroneous elements. This work is an order from Lord Mortimer. All the details have been conceived with a specific goal in mind. Upon closer examination, you can see that even the style clashes with that of most of the other works in the manor. No. If Mortimer has taken special care as the conception and the exhibition of this painting in his study, in the same way as for the nightmare painting, it must be of some significance. And that is indeed the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. There's only one way of being sure. I'll have to find other clues that will confirm this information. See, this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. I must be sure of my choice. I cannot get it wrong. Am I absolutely sure this is the one to take?
I'm already pressed for time as it is. Mother's waiting for me on the wharf. sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur, I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why, what are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. I just surprised Piaget and Volner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer. Give me what you took from him immediately. Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. Look, I don't know what you're going on about and I don't have time for this right now. Don't think on getting rid of me so easily, Derichet. Where have you been? I'm still looking for my mother, if, if you can believe it. I've been in the manor basement to check if she might have gone lost. And uh, did you find her? No, not a trace. I'm warning you, Derichet. I have got my eye on you. I'll soon figure out what you are up to. And I am convinced that you have indeed robbed Mortimer. The game is up. Give me what you took from him. You know, this is becoming an obsession with you. Show me what you are carrying, or I will call the servants. Very well. Fair is fair. You've exposed me. Here. This is what I took from him. Look, I'm sorry. I acted on a bizarre impulse. I don't know either. And frankly, you have disappointed me. That said, it is not as bad as uh, you thought it would be. Right. We'll leave it there. I'm glad that things have been cleared up. So, are we finished here? Indeed we are. I shall leave you. That's right. Go play somewhere else. See you later, monsieur. Come on. I have to hurry up and join my mother at the wharf now. Ah, Louis. Perfect timing. As luck would have it. Come, my boy. I would like to have a word with you. Come closer, please. It's time we had a little chat. What's... what's wrong, my lord? Um, uh, tell me. What's with all the bodyguards? Louis, it's time you found out the truth. I've been observing you since you arrived. I see you running all over the grounds in the search of Sarah. I would like to prevent her from leading you even further down the wrong road. The wrong road? Louis, Sarah has made her own choices of her own free will, and I would like for you to have the same chance. You see, Sarah and I have known each other for a very long time, Louis. I am aware of her theory. About me? About Gregory? About the demons? And it's true. She's right. Look at me. I have inhabited this body since 1191. For the last 602 years, I have been this dear William Mortimer. 
And you truly have the power to manipulate the thoughts of men. That's right. Every demon has the capacity to infiltrate the minds of men and to read and steer their thoughts. Can you tell me more about your capacities, your supernatural powers? Supernatural? From my point of view, they are perfectly natural. Well, Louis, just because the monkey does not fly doesn't mean that we should consider the bird a supernatural creature. We are all part of a grand design. We are simply made like this. By developing our art, we are able to read thoughts as well as write in the minds of men. It is possible for us to make them bow to our desire, but it doesn't work without leaving some scars. And what do you do with this power? We help them, of course. Of course you do. And you expect me to believe that, I suppose. Louis, demon is just a word. It all depends on what exists beneath the surface. I understand that this isn't easy. The culture of men is centered on the fact that demons are responsible for all the evils on Earth. But if it's the same in every single culture, then maybe there might be something to it, don't you think? Certainly there is something to it. Control. Man has spent his existence wishing to believe in the supernatural and imposing his belief on others. What could be more convenient for manipulating the masses? A perfect, inaccessible being and a plethora of demons in every one. The perfect idea to relieve men of all responsibility while still finding them guilty. You've been Mortimer for 600 years? How long have the demons been among mankind? Oh, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that we have always been here. If I follow you, you must have witnessed some of the greatest moments in history. <laughs> you could certainly say that, yes. You seem to be fascinated by Christ. He... You weren't him, were you? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, not at all. He was my father, though. Strange as it seems. I beg your pardon? Am I dreaming? Ugh, please tell me I'm dreaming. We should have the chance to talk about all that again later, but yes, yes, he was my father. All the mythology surrounding Jesus of Nazareth really stems from my father's prideful need to show himself among men. Did you know ancient Greece? In many ways, yes. One day Pericles, the next Parmenides. Just the memory of the time I spent working on acoustics with Pythagoras well, it, it moves me quite deeply, to tell the truth. Pericles. He's the one who brought Athens to its golden age, isn't he? Mm -hmm. In a way, yes. He established democracy and then died during an epidemic. It wasn't so long after his two sons passed away. Isn't that right? Excuse me, Louis. I, I would rather not relive any more of that, if you don't mind. Did you know ancient Egypt? Oh, yes, yes. We were gods on Earth in those days. What did men call you then? Amenhotep IV. The... the tenth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty? Ooh, I see you're a connoisseur, Louis. Impressive. Did you experience ancient Rome? Oh, yes. Luxury and decadence, Louis. My family did indeed reign supreme, but from this period I retain only the works of my friend, Marcus Vitruvius Polio. I've noticed that you have a passion for the Crusades. Among other things, yes. Mainly the Third. It was during the Siege of St. Joan of Arc that I took possession of Lord Mortimer. And you've never changed skins or bodies since? I have used other envelopes, but only to carry out very short tasks. Apart from that, indeed I have been able to retain the identity of William Alexander Mortimer throughout the centuries. You're the devil incarnate. The devil? I'm not saying that all Judeo-Christian folklore hasn't served us, but the truth is, of course, something quite different. Please, don't look at us through the primitive prism of religions. I am not hiding any horns or goat's feet, Louis. I have no tail. 
Why do you bring up folklore? You mean that you've taken advantage of people's beliefs? No, not exactly. I mean that we, in fact, created them from scratch. It is amazing to see how mankind has such a strong need to believe in something superior to itself. It was very instructive for what was to come. Lucifer, the fallen archangel, left heaven accompanied by 133,306,668 angels. Is it true that there are that many of you? No, I assure you, Louis. Forget your Bible class, it's ridiculous. We are not angels, we don't have wings. There is certainly nowhere near a million of us. And for that matter, no sacred human text represents us correctly. There are several families, and the family to which I belong has eight siblings, including Gregory and myself. Sir Gregory is your brother? Yes, what can I say? <laughs> you can't choose your family. But it is very difficult to know exactly how many of us there are because a large number of our kind remain hidden or never reveal themselves even to us. What are the demon's projects for humanity? Our aim has long since been to protect humanity from itself. On the other hand, although we give them the impulse to succeed, we don't all agree as to the path they take to achieve it. But why me? Why do I tell you about the greatest secret ever revealed to man? It's... that's right. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. Why should I trust you? I'm not asking you to, Louis. If you are still in doubt about the demons, I can assure you that won't last long. What has my mother got to do with all this? She embarked on a crusade many years ago to kill all the demons. That must have upset you. I imagine you retaliated. No, I'm afraid she never forgave me. Forgave what? We met when she was still just a young woman. I appeared to her in a different form because I didn't want to reveal the identity of Lord Mortimer at that time. She was looking for someone interested in the occult to decipher an ancient book. We spent many years together. The old book until was Until I revealed wasn't my it? true... Did she speak about it? Not so long ago, yes. Indeed, it was already Al-Azif. She wanted to unlock the secrets. How would you qualify your species, scientifically? Hmm, good question. What is your area of expertise? Given the choice, I'd choose philosophy. So, consider us as an idea, Louis. We are but a word in the minds of men. But this word is capable of anything. Empires have been built on words. Continue. Louis, it's time you opened your eyes. Come, you'll soon see. After you. So, Von Borchert, he was looking for the Alazif for you. Exactly. Alazif has always belonged to my family, Louis. And with good reason. My father wrote much of it. Can you tell me what you've done with... What? You mean the Alazif? No, I already know that. Sarah came here with it and got rid of it. I was thinking of Von Borchert. He isn't essential, but he is a trusted person. He's a prisoner at our headquarters in Paris. All right. If you could manipulate us mentally, what's the point of all the theatrics of the conference? You must suspect that we asked ourselves that very same question. For many centuries, we didn't organize any conferences, and most of the time, it ended in civil war between demons. Many of us were killed during this period. The idea of organizing conferences was the answer to everything, the interest being to erect some rules among ourselves. Our family first divided up all the principal countries of the world. Now, whenever one of us wanted to propose a major change between these countries, they summon the demon in question and initiate a conference. The demon that initiates the proposition doesn't have to give notification of the subject of the conference beforehand. 
Consequently, we participate along with our best assets. Once the humans are brought together, the conference begins, but we are forbidden to use our talents to influence the participants. The first meeting is held in order to expose the subject to all the participants, followed by several days of reflection, during which we are allowed to be persuasive, but not to impose our will. A second meeting closes the conference with a final vote. So, for you it's a game, isn't it? I understand your remark, but after living several centuries, you stand back and enjoy what but reflection how do you agree and on pleasure global you can. Policy? Locally, we often have competing interests, and sometimes we start wars between men which are linked to our disagreements. Most of the time, our father steps in and gives directives, which my family follow to the letter. Indeed, in my opinion, it is high time we moved on. What do you mean? I mean that a new era must begin. The old monarchic regimes are outdated, and it's time to evolve. Did what happened to Elizabeth Adams have anything to do with you? Mm, unfortunately, the poor girl became an issue between us, in spite of herself. A family of demons is still a family, and as in all families, there are disputes. Elizabeth's family, the Adams, has always been under the patriarchal control of my father. As he and myself are not really on very good terms, sending poor Elizabeth here was terribly rude of him, really. You did accept, though? Mm, no, I would say rather I was presented with a fait accompli by Gregory and went along with the intention of helping her. But this is my castle, and everyone is the master of their own home. It was you who killed her. The child was already condemned, Louis. My father would never have let her be. I had to pass inside her mind and, yes, make her take her own life. Trapped between the unyielding control of my father and your mother's terrible treatments? I wouldn't wish a life like that on anyone. Would you? So neither my mother nor Peru were ever guilty. You just gave me the runaround with that whole investigation. Now don't take it the wrong way. I was obliged to keep up appearances so that Gregory wouldn't suspect me. And it enabled me to size you up, Louis. I hope I've answered all your questions, Louis. Come, I have something to show you. There... there is one question that remains to be answered. Why me? Why tell me all of this? Oh, haven't you guessed yet? I think you sorely need the Golden Order, and you want to make sure you've got it. Really? You really think I'm that desperate? Well, I did think so, but now I'm not so sure. Look, we are of the gods, Louis. Always have been. You, as much as me. You are one of us, Louis. You too are a demon. Are you serious? You know it. Deep down inside, you know I am telling you the truth. Where do you think that natural charismatic presence comes from? Your talent must already have manifested itself somehow. Have you ever had any visions? No, stop it, it's absurd. Have you never found yourself suddenly inside someone else's body without knowing why? No. Whilst asleep, maybe? That's how it often happens the first time. Your spirit wanders unconsciously. My mother can't have lied to me about that. It's true. Your real mother would never have lied I... to you. I... what do you mean? Louis, I would rather you found this out from her own lips, but it's important that you know. Sarah is not your mother. I... what? I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Louis. But you must know the truth before you commit an irreparable act. No, I... no. It, no, it's not possible. You are my son. Liar! Well, well. So now you're his bastard. You really took me for a fool. Don't make a move, you clowns. Everybody keep calm. Don't say a word or I'll shoot your kid. Uh, not so clever now, are we? At last I found a way to put the pressure on you, Mortimer. Look, just calm down, monsieur. 
You stopped me from ending it all. Because of you, I've had to pay for it. You don't know what it's like. He's in your head. He's in your soul. I never want to feel that again. Jack, I did not betray you. You're just like him. Monsieur Peru, I don't even know what this is all about. It's quite simple. You're like them. If that's enough to make me unforgivably evil, then I'd prefer you shoot. But I don't feel as if I've changed. I'm, I'm still the same man I was an hour ago. They will corrupt you. It's inevitable. And I won't be able to resist, like you are now? Uh, well... Give me the benefit of the doubt. Think about it a moment. So, what are you gonna do now? You've just found out your true nature. What difference does it make? Wait, Jack! If it weren't for me, you, you'd be dead by now. You've seen who I am, and this so-called revelation makes no difference. I'm not a slave to my birth and I refuse to pretend to be a victim. I am Louis de Richer. Do you really believe you've got enough strength to resist him? I am who I am. Only our actions truly define us. And you can threaten me all you want. It won't make any difference. Don't change, Louis. You're strong. I wasn't able to make it. You're just like him. You are already. You can't see it, or you don't want to see it. But it's already too late. In fact, I haven't got any choice. You always have a choice. You know very well what will happen to you if you shoot me. You're going to be held accountable, and you will lose everything, starting with your freedom, and then your head. I told you, I don't care. Not about yourself, maybe, but what about your daughter? It wouldn't be the same for her, would it? Shut up! Shut up! She will be alone, in a world that you know is hostile. What will become of her? I... That's true, but... Don't abandon her. Not a second time. It's your last chance, my friend. <laughs> it's over. Come now. <laughs> you know what I told you. Evil and good depend on you, and not on your nature. <laughs> yes, it's true, and the same holds true for all of us. Monsieur Peru, I am willing to overlook this latest scene. You can thank my son for that. I think, however, <laughs> that you ought to take your leave for your good and ours as well as that of your daughter. Shaken up? You've experienced many significant events since your arrival. To tell you the truth, I don't get much time to ask myself those questions. Quite right. Best not to react to all this too suddenly. Take some time to think about it all. For now, I think you ought to find Sarah, my son. You ought to talk things over with her. So she's been lying to me all along? Let her justify herself. What's done is done. Sarah must explain herself. You must clear the air. We'll have all the time we need to talk afterwards. But all in good time. B before you join her, I'd like to give you something. As a demon, I would like to introduce you to your first talent. What do you mean? Open your mind, my son. Relax. You hold immense power. It's already there inside you. Empty your mind of all thoughts. Just let me show you the way. I should relax. Open your mind. Hear my voice. Feel the vibrations and listen to what has been happening to you deep inside, but which you have been concealing. Trust yourself. It's all already in there. I... I can hear something. Now breathe. It's a sound very, very faint. That's right. Concentrate on it. My voice is growing fainter, but I am here. I... Whispers... Words... Mixed voices... Mm. Focus on one of them. Don't be afraid. I... I sense a stream. Some words are clear, but not all of them. Let them enter into your mind. I... Hear them. Now, 
Now I can hear a clear voice. Well done, Louis. Congratulations. What was it? You are now able to read people's minds. I... what? You heard me. From now on, whenever a human speaks to you, you will be able to read their current thoughts. So, if you need to know something in particular from someone, all you have to do is make them think about it. But... I'd be violating their minds, wouldn't I? No, no. Nothing of the sort. You won't really be penetrating their psyches. Let's just say you'll be picking up residual signals emitted by their thoughts. It isn't intrusive at all, rest assured. There are also a few rules you need to know that govern this talent when used between ourselves. You can read the thoughts of demons as well as of humans. But be careful. A demon more experienced than yourself will know that you are spying and will often react quite violently. It's considered bad form to play around the psyche of another demon. It's a question of courtesy. But let's be clear. What is most considered bad form is getting caught. So I would advise against trying to read the thoughts of Gregory, for example. Home? Yes, the old grump is touchy and rather a stickler about the conventions. On that note, go and see Sarah, Louis. Otherwise, she might leave without you. We'll continue this discussion later, if you want. Just join me in my study when you've finished. You're right. I need to go now. See you later, Father. One more thing. If you want to know the truth about your birth, ask her about Paris. 1763, at 12 Rue des Martyrs. That's where she disemboweled your mother to steal you from me. It's not that... I must hurry to the wharf. Emily, what are you doing here? You wouldn't have seen... Mother? No! No, what's happened? No, Mother! No! She's ruined my life, Louis. I am sorry. What were you thinking? Emma meant everything to me. Your mother destroyed everything by shooting her. She was me, and I was her. Dear God, I beg you, make him kill me. I've had enough of it all. I no longer have the strength in me. You're the one who killed Emma, not my mother. And it wouldn't have happened if Sarah hadn't struck out at Emma first. I needed to talk to her. She was going to tell me everything. I am sorry. I did what Emma would have done. Get out of here! Why have you always lied to me? Why didn't you ever tell me I was his son? Rational and open. I spent my whole life swimming in lies. Emily, what a waste. I 
feel like I know nothing. That I have to learn everything all over again. I'm a demon. I age more slowly. I can mentally manipulate people. I don't even know if it's a good thing or a curse. No. No, this is an advantage. I could get used to this pretty quickly, I think. Damn it. What a mess. Come on. Man up, Louie. I'm still the same old me. Demon or not, I'm still in charge of my actions. And this father, I know nothing about. Yes, I've still got a lot to learn. It's enough to drive you crazy. Everything I believed in, nothing holds true anymore. Pull yourself together, man. I need to find some answers. There's no way of being alone for a minute. St. Jerome and the Angel. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. All right, I've retrieved everything. Sir Gregory? Good day, Louis. I think it would be good to talk. How are you feeling? I don't know. I understand. I heard that William spoke to you at last about our nature and our family. It's a good thing, but you must be a bit shaken up. That's the least you can say. I bid you welcome among us, Louis. Knowing William, he probably didn't go into any detail about our family, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. How many of us are there in the family? We are eight brothers and sisters. What do you mean by brothers and sisters if we can change bodies? You reason with logic. Uh, we have retained the human habit. When we first come into this world, we retain a certain attachment to our first envelope. If we are born as a man, we are brothers. If we are born as a woman, we are sisters. But I must admit, it has absolutely no real importance. They're just bodies. Well, tell me then, are there any other families like ours? There are officially seven, but we're the oldest and therefore the most powerful. Is there a head of the family? You'll see. You'll meet them all, of course. When you are ready, they created us and set out the rules, especially our father. As for our mother, she retired from the political stage. We don't see her much anymore. I think that all these questions simply bore her. What's Lord Mortimer's problem? I think he allows himself to be devoured by a need for recognition. Has he always been like that? More or less, but thinking about it, I believe that the birth of our latest sibling greatly accentuated his discomfort. Do you think he's jealous? I didn't realize you were so good at behavioral analysis. Indeed, William certainly is prone to jealousy. Finding one's place, notably in the eyes of our father, is not easy. And we each do what we can to succeed. But I can't justify this perpetual rebellion against our rules. How long has our family been in existence? We have been here since the very beginning. What do you mean, exactly? Are you trying to get information from me? Uh, I, no, not at all. I, I was just wondering why that particular question seemed to disturb you. Uh, let us not insist, then. You yourself weren't very convinced by the question, it seems. I see. There is still much to learn. Yes, it's true. You've got some catching up to do, my boy. One thing you must understand, regarding any disagreements that might arise between William and myself, is his position with regard to mankind. 
what do you mean? Well, for centuries we've been trying to help and therefore preserve humanity. Monarchies are simple and practical. They enable us to inspire humanity efficiently, and I can't understand why William wants to replace them with democracy. But if your intention is not to dominate the human race, why not let them be master of their own destinies? I perfectly understand this type of reaction from you, less from William. The main thing you're lacking is time. Man is transient, and one of his particularities is that he does not learn from the errors of his peers. He uses up an incredible amount of energy building and destroying whatever he himself has put into place. If we weren't here to help them, guide them, I sincerely believe that humanity would have become extinct by now. On the other hand, we are eternal, Louis. When we plan ahead, we do it for the long term. Yes, I, I understand, but that's more like tyranny, isn't it? Well, it's all a question of your point of view. From man's point of view, I can understand how he would have that impression, if ever he found out. But don't forget your true nature. From the demon's point of view, in other words, ours, letting man do as he thinks fit, would equate to letting him race to his own demise. But what about man's freedom to choose? That is man's worst enemy, Louis. Imagine a creature that dies without reaching the age of adulthood. It remains a child. We have to help him, otherwise he will put himself in danger. It has taken centuries for our family to establish relative peace between demons. Thanks to this policy, we have been able to decide everything by confining the other families to subordinate roles. And now William is obsessed with disrupting everything. Peace between demons? What do you mean? I'm not talking about conflicts within our family. If that was all there was, everything would be fine. But several other families, younger but nonetheless powerful, are trying to upset the balance. At present, we dominate most of the major countries around the globe. But some families are pushing, via less influential countries, to gain ground. Do you understand? As best I can, yes. When the time comes, you must take up a position on the political chessboard. I only hope your father doesn't take you down with him. Are you offering me an alliance? Louis, I do not believe that just because your father is mistaken, all is lost for you. You owe William nothing, so there's nothing obliging you to support him. I want you to make an informed choice. Now go and see your father, see what he has to say, and then think it over very carefully. That's exactly what I intended to do. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. If I've been able to help you in any way, go now. Portrait of George Washington. I haven't the time.
Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You've made the right choice. Now you are definitively free from your sister's lies. And from her, in the process. I respect that. Given what she did to me, she deserved nothing less. And, apparently, I'm not the only one. I'd rather not talk about it. I understand. Why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be too many truths to absorb at one time. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? Hard to say. At peace, really. Oddly enough, I, I understand things that have happened to me better now. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal, but you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, you can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say? According to him, the family is a prickly subject for you. He exaggerates. I don't have problems with all our family, far from it. I admit I find it difficult to follow the path set out before me sometimes. I don't share their vision, and they don't understand me. They find you unstable. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm, I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. So that's your project? Of course not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on. What do you mean? Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? But that's completely immoral. Immoral? Louis, you surprise me. Morality has nothing to do with it. Morality is a concept that we invented ourselves to domesticate man. <laughs> don't react like them. Can't you see? It's all within your grasp. It's not very noble if you ask me, but maybe you invented that concept too. What will happen if I refuse to subjugate men? It will come naturally to you, my son. But not with the aim of subjugation, but rather to create the best balance possible. You'll see. It comes to us all after a few centuries. I'm just trying to help you save some time. They are perishable, Louis. They come and they go. They are mere butterflies that take themselves for gods. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence. But humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So... That's your objective, is it? To understand who we are?
I understand your goal, but the change you propose is not really a significant one. It is merely more smoke and mirrors. You must understand that we directly depend on men. Consequently, we have to do our utmost to help them progress and to prevent them from killing each other. What proves that men are unable to evolve without our control? Look at history. Every time man tries to act on his own, he creates more problems than solutions. You will understand better after a few centuries. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past, and that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. What do you mean exactly? A new skill. And not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. I don't see how I could do that. I shall help you the first time. How do you do it? It's an animal resonance. How it works is still a bit unclear even to us. Like a wave or a sound? That seems the most likely, yes. In my opinion, demons are capable of tuning their psychic frequency to that of others. That is why, for example, I tend to surround myself with deaf and dumb servants. The servants dressed in black. I infiltrated them. I opened a channel between them and me, and then I deprived them of speech and hearing. This way, no other demon can turn them against me. Okay. Let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Pianchi to inform you, the Pope You're going to has use your powers signs. to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play. As well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope, as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me, and I'll send it off immediately. All right. I'll take care of it.
well. Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but if I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. I wanted to thank you for your help. I mean, for your time talking to me about the Holy Lands. Oh, and did you find it? It's the crusade of a lifetime for some people. You are searching for another Holy Grail. You're nearly there. Link into his thoughts. Does it annoy you at all? But what on earth is he trying to get at? Why do you ask, Louis? I don't follow. For the glory, Your Eminence. I can feel it coming. It's working. What insolence? Why, really? I am a man of the church, Louis. May God keep me from such ambition. Right. Let me in, Your Eminence. Why? <gasps> uh, uh, I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with it and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, your Holiness, thank you for your trust. It turns out, now that I'm here, that I find Lord Mortimer's projects grant us many more advantages in comparison to what Sir Gregory had suggested. We are talking about the future of the Holy See. Hmm, there. That should be enough to justify the change of vote. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now ideally, it'd be better to do without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today the date is 2401-1793. I could pretend that the code got erased during the voyage, as if the letter arrived in really bad condition. That would be perfectly understandable given that it's traveled across the seas, right? In one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Justizia, misericordia e umulta. Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini.
Your eminence all ready to send the What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Calm down now. Monsieur de Richet came to see me because he was having anxiety attacks and wanted something to help him relax. I'm afraid I've been a little heavy-handed. Uh, you can say that again. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is, and there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Can you keep a secret? Of course, my son. Would you like to tell me under the confidentiality of confession? Ah, oh, don't talk rubbish. I don't trust the little runt because he is Mortimer's son. Would you believe it? How does he know? Dear God, how is that possible? I am flabbergasted. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. Committing a crime in my room is out of the question. Think, it will all be on our heads. No doubt about it. I, I refuse to run the risk. Right. Monsieur Von Von, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. You can't attack him without running the risk of jeopardizing the conference. Even though Sir Gregory has the edge? No. Gregory will never forgive you. Very well, Piaggi, you win. I refuse to let you do the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the Red Salon. Emily, can I come in? I... No, it's not a good time. <laughs> not right now. Leave me alone. I can tell from your voice that th there's something wrong. Let me in. We have to talk, Emily. I said no, goddamn you. You've been drinking. Why aren't I surprised? Do you think you'll find the solution in alcohol? Get out of here, Louis. I told you not to come in. First your sister, now my mother? How far will your anger go? Do... Do you really think I'm not suffering? You know nothing. You understand nothing. On the contrary. Everything that goes on in here is is much bigger than you and me. You made your choices and and now you're going to have to take responsibility for them. Look, I must tell you something important. Emily, listen to me. I'm fed up with talking. It's about what's happening here. It's about Mortimer and home. They are... I know they are demons. That's not all. Go on. I'm one of them, Emily. I'm a demon too. I know. But, but how? Sir Gregory stopped by to tell me. I... He wanted to bid me welcome. I don't understand. Welcome to the family. Uh, uh, you? You're his daughter? Mortimer's daughter, Louis. What? No, no, that's not a, that's not possible. If, so we have- We are brother and sister? This 
is too much, Louis. Much too much for me, Louis. I can't look myself in the mirror. I should never have spent the night with... I was attracted to you from the moment we first spoke on the boat. Now I understand why. Do you realize what that means? I'm a monster. And I am one as well. When I think of my feelings for you, I... Ah, oh, that feeling. It hurts all of a sudden. I... She, she's there. I... I can feel her inside me. She's trying to read my thoughts. Emily, don't do that. Get out of my mind, please. Let me remind you that it's forbidden between demons. I... Sorry, Louis. I didn't want to. I have a sister. It's... It's very strange for me, too. A sister for a brother. Yes. Yes. I must get some rest. I must ask you to leave me now. All right, but don't finish that bottle. Don't start now. I would like to get some sleep. I'll be leaving you then. I thank you, Emily. Grammar of Port-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language in all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world, at least une partie of it. Dear Gregory. All right, I've retrieved everything. Golden elixir. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit, the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. Everything went as planned. I didn't encounter any particular difficulties. Well done, you. On my first try, well, it took me three goes. But you did it. Gregory, what can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother, Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to eyes. There he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. Does he have an inferiority complex? I've told him time and time again, Louis. He always has to take it one step too far. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn?
It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. You came here to warn me, sir. No, to advise you. Advise me against my father? Why? I think you are capable of deciding for- You haven't answered my question. Why warn me against my father? What are you afraid he will do to me? Well, I wouldn't want him to lead you into, I don't know what absurd adventure in you which- You act as though I were in danger. I agree with Louis, Gregory. You're trying to pass me off as a villain about to devour him. That's not funny, William. I won't let him follow you. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over. And now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. <coughs> if you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature and do all I can to stay human? It's useless trying to resist my true nature. I am a demon. May as well accept it. The sooner the better. Even if I continue to live as a human, all my friends and acquaintances will inevitably end up dying. And I'll be left on my own, forever. I am a demon and I have to behave like one. The sooner, the better. So, <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? I shall follow my father, Sir Gregory. Very well, but don't say I didn't warn you. Please, don't take offense, but I just can't turn my back on him. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. Come, follow me. It's time for us to get ready. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us, and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is? You. My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards. 